Okay, ma'am, should we start? Yes, no problems, madam. Okay, okay. A very good evening to one and all. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our guest speaker for the session, Dr. Mrs. Shaila Subbaraman. Uh, madam has uh, left on that day due to some network issues, so she is going to continue with us. Uh, and uh, she is very uh, happy to solve any query uh, by the participant. So, ma'am, please, I am uh, now hand over it to you. Please continue. And uh, first, sorry, yeah, uh, I want to welcome you. So, please accept our welcome. Yeah, give me the, the session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, screen sharing. Yes, yes. Turn on present now. Okay. Your entire screen. Now, Kikita. Share. Share. Uh, madam, hello. Yeah. Uh, hello. As uh, discussed, you asked that for the first whether uh, they are having any query or uh, you will be continuing. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, am I audible, madam? Hello? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Screen is visible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, welcome to my left out session on that day. Dear participants, I'm very sorry. Uh, Full screen. Huh? Full screen. Full screen. Full screen. Full screen. Full screen. Yes, full screen. Full screen. Full screen. Full screen. Uh, yes. Uh, would you like to ask any questions on whatever I had presented or even in general NAC or NBA or OBE? If the questions are there, I think will be beneficial to more participants. Otherwise, I can present whatever was left on that day. So, dear participants, I would like to address your queries as such because that will highlight many things. Hello, Sheetal? Uh, Ma'am, no one has posted the chat, so no. you continue with the presentation. Okay. 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 So I think that day we were looking after what are the requirements and the benefits of uh, any accreditation system or accreditation procedure as such. And we had seen that there were the issues like many reports from various agencies or the industries or even AICT, NASCOM, Tech Mahindra, that these engineers, the fresh engineers, which are come out of the engineering colleges are not really having those qualities by which the industries will be happy to em em employ them. They basically, their employability index as such is very low or the skills what are required by the industries, they lack and they do not have the deep knowledge of the basic things. So what basically accreditation is trying to do is to go into the deeper aspects of the education or the learning as such. And instead of giving emphasis for the teaching, the emphasis is on learning and that is what you are undergoing. The last four days you are basically uh, listened to number of speakers, seminar speakers and have got those ideas. So I will not highlight on that as such. But that was the need of the hour that our engineers are basically higher education, that is the graduates coming out of higher education institutes are on par with those from any international school or the college as such. And they can have the mobility of the students in terms of getting higher education in some foreign university or getting the employment. And from that point of view, whatever the Washington Accord has been signed by 20 countries, we also are one of the signatory of that and hence emphasized by our HRD or now it is the education department as such of the government of India to have accreditation 
both of NAC is the institute and NBA of that of the program. So the graduates will be benefited, not the graduate, the benefits are to the students, no doubt the first stakeholder, the faculty, the second stakeholder, the institute or the program as such, they have the pride that they have got the accreditation, society as such, because the local problems will get solved and they also have a pride that some accredited college is in our local area and employer, the most beneficiary of this is the employer and and for the student coming in an entrepreneur. So these were the things we're talking about, what are the benefits and all that. And higher education uh, institute as such, then what should be the goals of the uh, higher education as such? And here we say that, like I think in the morning also, or you might say I heard about the Bloom's taxonomy in the three cognitive, uh, in the three uh, domains, cognitive domains, psychomotor domain, affective domain. And then these things students will have to do self-learning, teamwork skills, professional skills, project management skills, beside having a knowledge of their domain, as well as the related interdisciplinary knowledge so that they can become uh, what I can say is a win-win situation, both for the employer as well as for the employee, and he will use his knowledge if at all he starts his business. So the goal of the Educational Institute is not only to give the degree, which is only a sort of written document that he has this BTEC or some degree in hand in some discipline, but if he doesn't have the standing of his own in these three domains, then he is not going to be successful in his life. He will not, he'll be, today he will be hired, but tomorrow he'll be fired. And hence, our responsibility is to prepare the students with mindset such that they are prepared for anything to do and their minds are such that they can face the challenges, even of the adverse conditions, which we have faced in last six, seven months due to COVID. Such situation can happen anytime in their life also. And then uh, we have to ful fulfill our goal, our nation's goal as becoming the Atmanirbhar Bharat. And hence for that, we need many, many engineers with fresh mind, innovative mind. They will have some sort of research aptitude and will come out with many. and by Indian will be the thing with us. So this was, we were up to this, that, that day, systematically it will happen. Once you take the admission in four years, somehow or the other, he will get a degree. And since the uh, most of the time it is mark based, so they will have a good distinction also, but they will not have the skills which are required to, for them to become successful wherever they go or even in the society as such. So what is OB and all that, I will not, I'm not going to, it's some base outcome. You know that everywhere it is a program, educational objectives, program outcomes, course outcomes, module outcomes, our outcomes, each and every learning hour, teaching and learning hour, what are the outcomes of that, whether students have obtained those or not. So these are the things. And one of the things very important as far as OB is concerned is that, this belief that each and everybody can learn it's not only the good students or the bright students will learn and will get the good grades it is the belief that everybody has the potential to learn only thing the faculty has to work as a facilitator to see that that particular potential is touched or probed and then like an scr it is going to get fired and then is going to be the sky of the uh, a sky will be the limit as such. And this is the job I think as a faculty will have to do to find the potential, hidden potential in the students and correspondingly uh, nurture it so that they also will do some tremendous, un, I mean, establish, uh, I can say, uh, a good things in their life. So we have to basically not depend only on the end examination results, but we have to see how they are basically progressing as far as their which levels and the three domains are concerned. So this is our duty as such. So I think I was at this uh, slide that day and I was trying to tell you that it is not only getting a degree or finding a job and getting a monthly salary to his, keep his family happy is the degree required. A degree is required for him even to 
have a happy and peaceful life in his own house with the society wherever he works and in all the i mean a sort of task what he will be doing he will enjoy that and for that to have that enjoyment he has to see that i have to do this thing how i can do this and how i can complete it a sort of some some sort of planning execution and seeing that if failure is there because of it which which has come and whether i can improve it next time and so that go on improving every time all the weaknesses what he has build on the strengths what he has and progressively go where the all the i mean 100% perfect is only at the infinity but having that sort of vision to go that infinity is something we'll have to put in the minds of the students is not mark mark is only to get an entry but then every sustainability of him in his life is going to be how he is good and that is what we have to emphasize or imbibe in his mind so i mean he has to be a good learner good thinker thinking is something which is associated with our brain and that is what in the morning rathod sir was telling it is something like gnana yog it's something like grabbing the knowledge analyzing it designing it developing something and creating is the final stage do something which is was not existing there and that is why the thrust by our government on innovation startups uh, all this skill up all these things have come and second main factor is the listener and communication because whether when he goes to a society he has to interact with the people so he has to basically have that habit of listening to other and putting his opinions uh, i mean if they are if find that they are really uh, i mean acceptable to him he he should have convincing power also that yes this is what is good or bad or something like that so in the team also he has to support the team he has to contribute in time uh, uh, contribute uh, to that team he has to become a leader so he has to organize the thing plan those things so project management and all these things so these are the interrelated now this is the thing that which basically comes from our washington accord and this is going to remain whether there will be digital bloom's taxonomy or previous bloom's taxonomy the action verbs will change but the basic things how a student learns and how he is get the skills is not going to change and that is going to remain maybe the tools will be different because this is a technology era as such and in the technology era the software tools will keep coming and this should be his attitude to learn those enthusiastically inquisitiveness should be there in his mind and apply those so that somebody else gets benefit no doubt he also gets to know that but some society or some other gets benefited so when we say that one of the life role he has to do is learner and thinker then the skills what he should have are the analytical skills so this is analysis of a situation and corresponding drawing some conclusions from that and tackling that is one thing which is important where the thinking comes into picture listener and communicator all the communication skill is something which he has to do with the employees there with the people who are working under him with the people who are above him in the society with his family members even with a child and with a old person so that communication skill and communicator so that is the communication one of very very important things you are basically trying to convince to a customer that this product is good your communication skill come to picture not only the verbal but written document or even your body language comes into picture implementer and performer which skill it is a development skill trying to de design and develop is implements and performs also problem finder and solver always engineers are supposed to solve the problems in all the fields so he has to be a problem solving skills planner and designer project management skills creator and producer creator something related with the research research and innovation comes into picture and research is always not costly at all this is one thing i want that uh, uh, costly equipment then only i'll do the research research doesn't say that it's only your thinking which will be related with the research the concept is something which comes out of our brain implementation you may need something which perhaps with a very great idea anybody will support you with the money even the industries are ready for us for uh, i mean uh, to support financially teacher and mentor somebody is a weak student we have to mentor him so that he becomes strong slowly four years time is there when the students in their undergraduate level are with us from first year to final year it's our duty to spot such students and correspondingly feed them with whatever information is required these are the interpersonal skills needed 
supporter and contributor in a team, in a society, wherever in our organization, you have to support the goal of that organizer and contribute so that that is rich. Each and every uh, stakeholder is important here. So these are the teamwork skills. Team member, partner, again, teamwork skills. Leader and organizer, management skills. So all these, if you see on the right side, which are the skills, these are nothing but the graduate attributes we are trying to tell through our NBA. And once we have this in mind, and along the technical knowledge, which is being imparted to the students, if through various co-curricular and extracurricular activities, we can try to develop these skills in the student, and not only few students, all the students, I am sure that it's, we can feel that, yes, we have justified our post and we have done our duty. So this basically is the emphasis of OB. Students should understand. Today's student is exam oriented. So we have to emphasize on his mind that it is not only the domain knowledge which you are trying to acquire. It has to be there. Nobody can be successful without justifying his degree, which is a particular domain. But beside that, he will be indispensable wherever he is, if at all he has this type of skills and the attitude as such. So this basically is the emphasis of OB. And don't feel, I think, I would like to tell, because I have done this exercise since 2003, last 17 years in my college, this is the fourth or fifth, I think, accreditation under my guidance in Walchand College of Engineering we faced. And I know how tedious or how basically you face the documentary evidences we have to produce, we have to keep all those records. This is not a teacher's job, it's not. It's a part and parcel of our job. Unless we keep the records and try to analyze those, when we say our students should have analytical skill, design skill, how is that? We don't plan our lessons. How is that we don't analyze what the previous year's results were? We have to find out the gaps, fill those gaps, and see we also progress. It's the overall progress of all of us. And hence, don't be don't shy away from doing that documentation work. Perhaps you can use the Moodle like software tools today to keep all those things. And I am, I think SPIT, I am referring, but many colleges are highly dependent or highly I mean, making use of such tools very effectively. I'm very happy to see that even these um, three STTPs which have been done uh, in VLS, I have seen the way they have worked on those. So it is quite, it's initial hurdle as such, the teething troubles, but once you get used to it, it is easy. So these are the beliefs I said, I will not spend much time. Uh, there is one book, uh, I do not know the name, but the Sparry, uh, is the author of that. It's a very small book, which was written in 95, but it's still, uh, you can say, the basics never change. So it is still applicable even today in this pandemic situation also. So these are mutual trust at all levels, drive all good outcome based schools. If I have a trust in a person who is under me, and I'm sure that he can do it, he will definitely do it. But if I show mistrust, even he is able to do it, he will not do it because he says that my boss doesn't believe in me. Similarly, the trust between the management and the faculty, senior faculty and the junior faculty, the faculty and the student, all this mutual trust at all levels will take. All good performing institutes have this thing in their mind. They have the growth mindset. Each and everybody should grow as far as their potential is concerned, their happiness is concerned, their financial condition, their academic achievement is concerned. So if these things happen for all of us, I think that is the win-win situation and all will earn. So these basically are the beliefs. So it's not only for the student, it is for all of us, even for us, even at this age, wherever, wherever you are working, you will go to the higher post, and that is one of the things. Our alumni who are at present in different industries are rising in their post year after year because they show some sort of potential they have, some sort of trust they capture from their management, and they can do great things. Sky will be the limit, as I said. These are the essential principles of outcome-based education. One is the clarity of focus. Now all of our work on POs and COs. This is my outcome. When I define it, I'll put a lot, lot of effort on that. And as Sir has said, it has to be a smart. It has to be specific, simple. M is measurable. Whatever you do, you should have how much I have attained this. So it should have some tool to measure the attainment of that. It has to be achievable. Something which is not achievable cannot, I mean, if we define that, we cannot be, we will not be able to measure it. So it has to be achievable. Realistic. I mean, yes, it uh, 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 gets applied in the real life application as such. So it has, it will be appealing and time bound. We do not want to do something which will be obtained after eight years. We are moving very fast. The half lifetime 
uh, Rathod sir also said in the morning, you must have said, whatever we learned 10 years back is not completely has become obsolete. And whatever we learned five years back is completely irrelevant today. The technology is moving at such a high space and the things are changing that we have to go on skilling, upskilling, reskilling ourselves so that students also will learn whatever is the current thing. And unless they know the current thing, there is no use for the industries or the employers. So once you have this focus, once you define your CEOs, the basic thing is defining very, very good course outcomes for your courses and then design it back from your vision, mission, PEOs, POs, CEOs. You go to your uh, each uh, lecture hour and design what should be the outcome as such, whether they have been attained or not. So there will be the curriculum development, how the pedagogical approaches should be used, what sort of assessment you are going to do. This is my CO, which will be the assessment tool, whether I can do it in my class or I need to give the assignment or a tutorial, some brainstorming session where, I mean, many critical thinking will come out. So all these things we have to see that how we can take our student from a lower level of understanding to the highest level of designing, invest investigating, creating, and all that. Another thing which try to generally as a faculty, we try to distinguish is between our students, that a student which is weak or the backbencher and those who are the front benchers. So that distinction should not be there. We have to believe in or we have to expect that all the students are going to do well in their uh, curriculum, in their ex examinations, and that expectation should be clear to all the students. And this basically is something like having trust in your students and expanded opportunities to all learners. Today, he hasn't, he could not do that assignment which I gave. Perhaps it was tough for him. You have to understand, you have to go to his level and understand that this particular, perhaps the word uh, that is the textual matter was not basically understood in a mathematical formulation form. So you try to make him understand. Maybe you put your effort or a, a bright student, you can ask the bright student to explain it or some senior to explain it and give them that tomorrow I am give, giving you an assignment, maybe after two days, which will be simpler than you try to do this. And go, go from simple level by increasing the difficulty level slowly and maybe in one, one month he will be able to tackle that. So give them. If he fails, okay, this time yes, and that is why we have the in semester assessment, which should be, I think, for all affiliated colleges. I also advertise that you have more and more in semester evaluation and give more and more weightage to that, so that students will know the understanding. They will try to do 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 it. No doubt, university system affiliated colleges at present are slightly in a different position. This can be very well done in the autonomous colleges, but try to see that the learning takes place so expanded opportunity to all learners and in an institute where all these principles are being implemented we can say that yes this institute is implementing outcome-based education by which whatever type of accreditation is there whether it is a NAC accreditation or the um, ranking um, is to be done or it is a national board of accreditation and or even abet abet also can come and check the standards of academics in our institute so that will be possible so when implemented systematically with deep understanding again i emphasize on this that one has to understand the philosophy of the outcome based education have a deep understanding of that imbibe in the faculty himself or even all the stakeholders those type of qualities which we expect our students to have and then any accreditation will become a routine matter enabling these HEIs, higher education institute to put efforts for improving the quality education and next time getting better accreditation grades. Do not get satisfied with what you have got. You have to always expect higher and higher goals and try to reach to that. So in nutshell, outcome-based education pictorially can be shown like this, that you want to implement outcome-based the curriculum needs to be designed or you have to see what whatever curriculum you have got whether the your objective was meeting the mission vision mission program educational objectives are being obtained or not correspondingly 
depending upon that curriculum you'll have to design learning and teaching method it is not only the chalk traditional chalk and board no number of pedagogical and you know it and you also can invent being a faculty you can do the experiment try to show that if you do like this then the overall improvement of the students is there so this needs to be done and once learning teaching is done only way that to see that our students have learned is the assessment through various types of the examination not only written examination don't give much emphasis on the written examination how do they think so it is going to be a semester long exercise for your student for your students through which all the higher order pos which is po5 to po12 in our nba document you can see it by correspondingly developing the rubrics in the morning i think even upendra kulkarni sir was also telling you about seeing all the things even when you take your orals to have some sort of rubric develop which maps to your program outcome and if at all all your efforts or whatever you have done today maybe is not giving that result try to analyze because of what this is happening there could be any number of reasons prioritize those and address those definitely semester after semester all things will improve so this basically is a sort of spiral growth is not going to stop at any place you will go to from 60% you will definitely go to 85% and then above that perhaps it could be difficult and now we are not talking specifically about the percentage but we are talking about l0 l1 l2 l3 level as such so in that level going to l3 level you may take some years to go to that but i am sure with these efforts with proper understanding don't try to say that this has been thrusted on us and we are doing this which is non academic no this also is academic because this is something is a learning science and if you have undergone the new education uh, policy as such 2020 then the emphasis is on all these things where you have to have interdisciplinary knowledge the skills development attitude preparation ethics our culture our heritage the pride in that please try to make that pride about our nation in the minds of these young student because these are the pillars of our nation tomorrow they are going to take our nation to a level of vishwaguru you faculty will take it to a level of vishwaguru where our students will become atmanirbhar and the entire india will flourish so these are the key constituents well, already know that uh we have already faced this crisis of corona but also there are many opportunities which are waiting for india because of what because i mean i need not say so but we are seeing the result that multinationals are backing off from china and diverting their business to india what are the strong points of india we have rich in number as far as young population is concerned economical human resources there we do not expect those high salaries which are given in the western countries as such we are happy with because our basically culture says that if job satisfaction is there and if you can make others happy that is the most satisfaction you get out of it which is like honesty sincerity and at present the government policies are supporting this so the mission of be indian and by indian we have also no uh, many software tools and all that uh, i have in ban so we are developing those things which can be which can replace those so be indian by indian policy is going to demand manufacturing of many products and unless the manufacturing sector flourishes any economic position of the country will not develop so there are many opportunities for india or this young generation to wait uh, i mean will be there so generally what we say that when the software tools are there the jobs potential will go down this was a fear even 10 15 years back when the banking banking sector started operating this type of the banking software so the commercial people started operating but this has never happened in fact the reports say that there will be three times more then what will be lost due to the technological evolution in the areas these are the areas we'll have to see that artificial intelligence machine learning robotics data analytics and all those things 3d printing these are the areas and hence the culture which was in india which was of assembly of skd semi knock down assemblies or completely knock down assemblies this will diminish our laptops our mobile phones our electronic equipments medical equipment will be will be fully manufactured in our country and we will use those if that culture comes maybe another 10 15 years but this is the what i can say the roots 
which we have to see that they are become strong so that tomorrow this tree will grow and there will be the fruits which next generation will take but then india will become definitely self dependent and will not depend on others even i mean uh, as space i mean all these things are there which are basically looking forward uh, that our engineers will contribute their hand so there is a requirement of large human resource equipped with knowledge passion and skills and hei is implementing stem knowledge knowledge has to be there stem is science technology engineering and maths with emphasis on the requisite skill set and then of course industries will have to come forward because every knowledge we cannot give and we know that we are also making the students self uh, learning base that is they will learn on their own because the technology will keep coming everything cannot be in the curriculum part and then industries will impart what is required from their point as the thing changes they also will come forward to train the graduates for upskilling which will fulfill our mission in the days to come okay so this is what uh, i wanted to tell this 10 or 12 slides i could not present on those days now i think i am open for maybe 5 10 minutes because already it is 5 5 uh, shital madam if anybody has the any uh, query also i can address that now yeah yeah sure ma'am yeah uh, yeah up to now actually in the ch uh, chat box uh, there is no such query okay 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 uh, any queries there you can post or directly ask ma'am yeah Mm, I think no query, ma'am. No query. Okay. Then okay. I think uh, you can hand over these two, perhaps. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, Ra Rangnathan sir. Yes, yes, yes. If he has come, I I would like yeah, to talk to him for two minutes. Sir has come, ma'am. Hello. Yes. Hello. Ha. So, um, thank so, you, ma'am. Hello. Ah, uh, yes, sir. How are you? Namaste. Fine, fine, ma'am. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sir, we met in March, na, March 18 in Delhi in AICT office. I was asking you regarding some of my doubts and also said that I will even come to your college. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember. This is for Margaret. So uh, I also wanted to hear you again, listen to you again. So I gave you a number to oh, Prashant. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You are you are so eloquent and uh, knowledgeable. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank think, you. Uh, yeah, Prash Prashant uh, was mentioning. I asked, how did you get? Uh, yeah, my friends. he was asking. He was yeah. Actually, Thanks. I come from Bal. I come from Balchand College, and many BMS faculty have visited our college, mm -hmm. maybe for uh, inspection also. Yes. And uh, I listened to you in that had interacted, but I think I am sure that you may not remember also because that was only one interaction meet with you as such. But anyway, uh, I remember. Okay, okay. I, remember. I think you you can continue with your. Okay, just a minute, sir. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you for rejoining and continuing the session on accreditation requirements and its benefits to the institute, department, teacher, students, and society as well. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, now it's great pleasure for me to introduce uh, our eminent guest for the session, Dr. R. V. Rangana. Uh, sir has completed his M. Tech and Ph. D. in Delhi. His research interests include fly ash, pond ash. Concrete, self-compacting uh, concrete, geopolymer concrete using fly ash, slag, and other industrial byproducts. The essence of his research have been documented in about 60 research publications, associated with seven PhD theses, out of which five have been completed. He is active, is active in professional organizations like Indian Concrete Institute, and has taken initiative in organizing several seminars, conferences, and exhibitions. He served as honorary secretary and chairman for ICI Karnataka Center during 2004 to 2006 and 2010 to 2012 as well. He is a recipient of prestigious award like AICT Career Award for Young Teachers in 1998 and ICI Forsop for Outstanding Concrete Technologist for the year 2011 by Indian Concrete Institute Chennai at national level. So he has also served as a HOD. in academics at bmsc and principal in bms institute of technology elahanka bengaluru on deputation during 
2014 and 15. At present, he is actively involved in implementation of OPE in engineering institute through NBA awareness programs, NBA evaluators training program as resource person, and also uh, as NBA evaluator. He is also an active member of various bodies like member faculty committee, Bangalore uh, University, member academic council, BDS Adaya, and VBC Mysore. On behalf of SBIT, sir, I welcome you to the session with virtual bouquet. I request all the participants to take active participation in the session and make the session interactive. Thank you. Sir, over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for that kind uh, introduction. Now, can I present? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can present. Can you see the presentation, madam? Yes, sir. I can see. Okay. What I do is. Yes, okay. Can you see this presentation now? Yes, sir. We can see your presentation. I will go to the full mode you are seeing now. This right? Okay. Right. Now I have changed the course title with um, slide instead of calling it as designing. It's called expectations. Um, from the point of accreditation, if somebody is looking at in that uh, fashion, okay. So in the next about 45 to 50 minutes, we will look at uh, what are the issues uh, involved for uh, teachers to uh, look at uh, uh, this um, particular uh, designing, of course, at the mark expectation, which you can call basically, okay. Uh, in between, I will be asking for uh, because I only see the screen now, uh, some kind of a remark from people am I audible or something like that so please respond okay um let's see the outcome based education i think uh, enough sessions have been already um, done um i would like to draw your attention to um uh, apart from the major mission the whole uh, you know framework which probably is very pretty clear for most of you is the target targets or the program outcomes and then what teachers do, what they do, okay, through during the semester becomes very important. And then in order to achieve this target through these activities, okay, so uh, designing or defining these course outcomes in a manner which we like uh, cohesively as a unit in the department or in the program becomes very essential. That is the point of discussion. See, other part, I think already the learned uh, experts have already covered in most of this. So, uh, looking at it, uh, uh, this particular um, program outcomes, many people might have already talked. I would like to only say that these are aligned with uh, international agencies, particularly Washington Accord. India uh, has aligned with Washington Accord for engineering programs, particularly tier one institutions. Uh, and hence, we have defined them based on the southern requirements. So you should keep them as a target for yourself. Um, and then many of uh, speakers probably have already spent enough time on explaining them. But I would like to emphasize, just to uh, make myself very clear, that these becomes very important. And I request all the participants to read them very carefully. The first one talks about application of knowledge, be it mathematics, engineering sciences, or any other thing, application. Given a situation of a complex engineering uh, situation, because most of the graduates will be um, exposed to that kind of a thing. The second one is the analysis part, um, you know, be it identifying, formulating, or doing a little bit of research. Um, in a, in in a and, and bring out some sustained calculation using the fundamentals. Okay, so analysis, problem analysis, very important for any engineers. Third one, most important, uh, designing either components or as a system. I mean, um, engineers without design skills uh, are no engineers at all. And hence, enough uh, courses have to be devised or enough practices have to be given to the students in terms of this. 
And in fact, in Washington, I got recent visits, which I happen to represent NBA. Um, the international evaluators were looking at this case, how our students are exposed to this analysis and design problems. Um, conduct investigations. Uh, we have a set of good experiments uh, designed in all programs, uh, any programs we teach, civil, mechanical, etc. But most of the time, they look a little prescriptive in nature. So for outcome-based education, probably we need to make a little more open-ended and we need to create some kind of an opportunities for students to explore the possibility of uh, you know, looking at different them. While you do this, of course, modern tool, any modern tool uh, from time to time, this keeps changing. It becomes important for students to learn. And then in addition to that, how they respond, their knowledge to engineering and society, we talk about now is global engineers. Our engineers are equivalent to any engineers graduated from Singapore, Dublin, or US. You know, that's the point which we are talking about. In addition, most engineers will graduate eventually and are also likely to be uh, leading the project teams and hence they need the kind of a project management skills and they should be able to handle a little bit of finance, budgeting and all that. So hence this attitude our attribute becomes very important. More importantly, what we teach them is a current knowledge, but 20 years from now, things can change significantly, and hence lifelong learning becomes very important. How do we embed all these skills in the course which you teach is the point of discussion today. In addition, NBA has told uh, that uh, the few departments were important. Um, so what is there if you have to do something additionally? So they said, okay, you can define program specific outcomes. They have to be specific to a program, it cannot be a general one. Uh, so some examples have been given here, let us say, students. Sir, sir, sorry to disturb you, sir. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, uh, we are going to see just a title slide. So. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so please uh, change your slide. Uh, we are able to see just uh, title slide. So, uh, we don't know whether you are heard. Just hold on. Yeah. Can you see this OB framework now? Yes, sir. We can see it now. Okay. Now, is it moving program outcomes? Uh, it is showing the OB framework and outcomes. Yeah. A second. Now, slide. Yes. Uh, other program outcomes now? One, two, three, four, five. Other program. Is it moving? I'm not getting some of these, your question. We are able to see the second slide about OB framework. Oh, it is not moving then. Okay. Wait, there must be some problem here. So you are seeing now program outcome slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, then now the de yes. details of program outcomes. Yes, One, two, three, four. Yes. I think I have to run in this uh, mode only, unfortunately. Okay. When I go to the full slide, something is happening. Okay. Okay. Okay, so program outcomes continuing. I was uh, describing these program outcomes, conduct investigation and all that. So I explained this. So this is program uh, specific outcomes. Now these are the specific outcomes and they want you to design for your programs. They have to be specific to your program. Like civil engineering students should be able to design they related to civil and they should not be overlapping with any other program. Uh, simple guidelines for you probably somebody has already spoken to you. They should be beyond program outcomes. They should be specific to the, your program, maybe two or three, not even four, I would suggest. Uh, must have a process to arrive when evaluators come, must be realistic in nature, okay? So this is what you have to do. And some examples I am presenting you for the sake of, in case if you have not done this program specific 
outcome. One more example for computer science and engineering. For example, student at the end of the course will be able to design and develop, let us say, mobile and web-based computational systems under realistic constraints. Uh, is what computer science engineering want because this cannot be done in mechanical, this cannot be done in civil, and hence it becomes a problem specific to computer engineering and program. Okay, so some PS4s which are not good examples we see when we evaluate a lot of uh, this thing or something like this analyze and develop solution to interdisciplinary project. Now, see, this, this looks very common to anything, this can go for any of the program, not necessarily. Your, your particular program of uh, computer science or mechanical engineering. So solve problem engineering of modern tools. Some people write like that. This modern tool has already come in PO5 in the uh, set of POs which NB has given. So hence, please avoid such POs uh, uh, to keep them as a some kind of a reference. Okay. Why NBA POs are important? Because they are important because they have been aligned to program outcomes NBA. So one to five are very important and hence you should look at very carefully. In every place, it is clearly said that it is complex engineering. And one or the other form complex engineering comes. And hence your aim should be to look at how our students can involve in solving complex engineering problem or in involving some kind of an activities which can lead to solving complex engineering problem. Okay. Um, the complex engineering problem by definition as per MBA given to Washington record is these are not the kind of problems encountered at the end of the textbooks. However, they have to be not completely framed. There has to be few choices for the students to work either individually or in a group. They can use any one of those uh, methods which you have taught them uh, through the fundamentals of uh, engineering principles or mathematics, physics, science, and so on. Okay, so this is about complex engineering problem. You should not give all this, uh, all the problems. Some of them should be unframed so that they can actually start working towards that. And uh, that's how the real time problem are likely to come for students when they graduate and move on in their life. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, are you seeing my slides now? Course outcomes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Now, to the topic of uh, today's interest. Now, these are basically uh, defined for uh, generally because see, when you talk about course outcomes, they become very important for the core courses. The core courses are the one which every student has to go through and hence becomes very important for us. NBA expects you to write about four to six, but it depends on you how you actually. Um, you know, uh, shape up yourself in that particular course. That we'll see a little later now. Um, now these are uh, supposed to be actually measured. Now generally when we go and look at, ask teachers to write somebody who has not been trained or not applied his mind, but can be an excellent teacher, uh, can come from a very good uh, institute, ask them to write, something like this uh, can come here as you can see. Uh, this I requested one of my colleagues who has been from Indian News of Science, excellent research skills, asked him to write some course outcomes. She simply took five units of this physics first level course and wrote understand, 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 understand. Um, um, nothing wrong with the teacher. He comes from a very premier institution. Obviously, premier institutions do not teach you how to write course outcomes, but they actually teach you um, how to do research, how to investigate and all that. Okay. So hence, Teachers, in order to practice outcome based education, have to spend little time in you know, actually figuring out what actually they want to measure basically. Now, even if you look at through the Bloom's taxonomy, probably it has been told, it will not help you. Now, as far as National Board for Accreditation is concerned, it does not prescribe, I repeat, it does not prescribe any taxonomies as such. However, Teachers, for their convenience, can look at some of these taxonomies. Um, could be Bloom's or Solo or a few others which Europeans use. Um, but please remember, this is not compulsory. But if you can follow this, it will actually, uh, uh, you know, synthesize your ideas and probably help you to organize your course and delivery and measurement. Okay, that's why. A lot of people talk about Bloom's taxonomy. Adoption of Bloom's taxonomy for engineering though is a little difficult uh, because it has been um, 
ideally done for schooling and hence you can also do this. Now I will not spend much time because it is already known. The first two is very clear. Remembering is simply recalling the information which has been fed to you. Understanding is something you actually know. Probably based on that you can explain or define probably. But these two skills are not, necess not sufficient for an engineer to excel or to solve complex engineering problems. They do help but not for solving. And hence, MBA expect at least apply, analyze, and evaluate for undergraduate, and analyze, evaluate, and create it for postgraduate programs. Okay? So remember, in fact, if you plot Bloom's levels and the uh, program outcomes, apply knowledge, problem analysis, and so on, um, you can very clearly see the PO1, first PO1, which is apply knowledge, is at the apply level of Bloom. So anything you want to map, you have to have beyond apply, analyze, and evaluate as far as Bloom's taxonomy is concerned. The first two, you cannot map it. You may ask questions. There are a lot of uh, you know questions which are people ask. Can I not ask questions in remember or understanding? You can. Why not? A teacher would like to know whether students are understood through quizzing or through some kind of a question, etc. But if you want to map it to PO1, PO2, and eventually use the assessments for measurement of the attainment of CO, answer is no. Okay. Now, hence, be careful about this. Now, coming to course outcomes, um, basically, what you need, uh, many people teach you in different ways, uh, but what essentially it boils down to me is any course outcome should have an action word that identifies the performance or demand because all course outcomes have to be measurable, first of all. Okay, who will write? Of course, the course coordinators will write. Um, can there be different course outcome for uh, different uh, courses? Yes, obviously, depending upon the courses, course outcomes will be different. Okay, so hence, an action word. What teachers think is important to measure at the end of the course, which students should know, which they are likely to use it for subsequent upward movement of the semester through the courses, additional courses which they do, or to apply in the real world. So either it could be compile, skill, identify, create, plan, demonstrate, apply. Now these are some of the action words which you are likely to use here when you write a course outcome, any one of them, because basically the minute you use such action words, you are likely to measure them similar action words you can use it in your question paper and hence it becomes measurable the first part is well taken care the second part depends on each one of the courses which you teach in your own domain and which knowledge becomes very important there are many things we teach in a course for about 40 hours let us say um out of that some of them we build uh, knowledge uh, but then some of them becomes very important whether they can apply or whether they can analyze or they can actually use all that information to design or conduct investigation. And hence, which knowledge becomes very important for students to go for appointment or for anything else, that knowledge you have to decide in the course. The teacher should be able to do this and this depends on uh, course to course. So I would leave it to here. It could be simply the the application of thermodynamics principles or it could be application of structural analysis or it could be web programming skills which a student would like to know but whatever it is learning statement in whatever learning you are uh, trying to measure please remember this is at that level in this year you are teaching this can change over a period of time and hence learning statements can change but the action words probably remain kind of a static over a period of time okay so this is what I wanted to tell as the first step in the course structure of a course. Now let us look at one of the course, let us say a first level course. Uh, people find it very difficult and say well, what we can, not many course outcomes can be written or not many out program outcome can be mapped, uh, questions are asked. I'm sure uh, most of the core engineering will uh, teach this kind of a subject. Strength of material. Then we have elastic constant transformation stress, bending and movement, bending stress, elastic constant. So this is a syllabus. And somebody uh, in a university write this something, course outcome, something like that. Student at the end of the course will be able to evaluate, will be able to suggest suitable material, should be able to behavior stem, should be able to understand, should be able to understand. Or something like that most teachers are writing now. 
um, nothing wrong in these course outcomes. Um, uh, are they wrong? No, they are not wrong. People are writing. But I would like to introduce little objectiveness at this point of time. Please ask questions when you write this course outcome. Even if you are grammatically written, all right. Are they measurable? Is they are measurable uh, in terms of these kind of a thing? Now, our, which PO you are the teacher has targeted with this course outcome. If you simply write like that, it is not clear which POs they are targeting. How many POs they would like to target with about five course outcome? That becomes the second question. Would you like to do only one PO, PO1 only? Or would you like to do at least two, three POs? Or you would like to do all 12 POs? You must be superhuman being to do that, but still, I would don't say it is wrong, but it's possible to do, but the type of available time in the semester scheme, almost impossible to measure all of them, okay? And do we want to do all of them if this course can give? If they can give also, you should not be doing it. That's the point I'm trying to make, okay? You have to pick up which are important for that particular course at which level and try to target and then try to evaluate most of the things. So this is something which you need to know. So most people try to write course outcomes in terms of their units. This is one way of writing, okay? In such cases, the likely fallout, you are likely to rewrite all these, understand, understand, or evaluate, evaluate. So the same type of skill or action work, which I said here, action work, same type of action words are likely to repeat, and hence the same type of skill you are measuring from the student in this particular course. That is something which you should remember, okay? I'm not telling wrong, but how are we going to maximize the uh, course for this for the attainment level now something like this uh, can be tried by teachers let us say same course if you look at the uh, syllables uh, it is all it could be uh, elastic constants or it could be stress or it could be uh, deflection of beams etc students at the end of the course will be able to apply fundamental laws it could be laws of physics or any other uh, relevant uh, fundamentals which you teach in your course uh, what will they do Actually, they compute uh, uh, of different deformation, namely stress and strain. Uh, in any given material, it could be steel, it could be wood, it could be anything. So this is a little more general course outcome, but applicable to any of those chapters, which means whether you are teaching bending stresses or whether you are teaching shear stresses in beams, you can actually use this CO1 which actually maps to PO1, this is application skills. So whether you are doing it in the test one or, or in the first event of your assessment, or whether you are doing it in the last assessment, you can actually map it to PO1, CO1 to PO1. So it's like you can actually ask questions related to that and compile at the time of assessment. That is the advantage of writing something like that. And then in the same course, if you are students are expected to go beyond apply let us say analyze then you can introduce the analyze analyze structural elements of different force systems to compute design bending moment and shear force it could be computation etc or whatever is the action words so this is the learning statement this is the action word in addition to that if the courses which you teach also have laboratory component let us say which students may be doing in the same semester or they may be doing little later okay it becomes very uh, you know interesting to combine this structural uh, sorry this course with laboratory and include two more course outcomes which will be very will be very satisfying to you know look at holistically students will actually conduct experiments so you can give them different types of open-ended experiments uh, to behave validate behavior not necessarily what you teach in a regular 10 to 12 lab hours give them something more ask them to write laboratory reports, their own reports, independent reports, and interpret them and also present it. So laboratory reports, it becomes communication, written oral and written communication, and this is conduct experiment. So in a way, in a simple first level course, you can actually target about four POs, which is um, kind of sufficient uh, in the time frame which you look at it. So this is one such example. So similarly, you can look at a slightly higher level course. For example, uh, let us say another course which generally people uh, throughout uh, country teach at, let us say, second uh, year or some people at third year. Here also there are about five, six modules which people work 
and some outcomes uh, university might have given. I picked it up from the Vishwavishwavya Technological University. Now, some teacher has written a reasonably good outcomes, but then again, for which PO it is missing. Now, my appeal to all participants who are uh, doing this, when you write course outcomes, it becomes imperative that you must be looking always which PO you target. Otherwise, what are you measuring and why are you measuring becomes a fundamental question. And when evaluator asks this, you will struggle to answer such question. And hence, it becomes very important for you to look at it. Okay. So, course outcomes can be good, but if you have to look at it a little more objectively. For example, I have written here, um, student at the end of the course, course will be able to identify constituents of concrete material. We teach a lot of cement, aggregate, etc., etc. But their characteristics, what is their specific gravity, what is their water absorption, what is their... So these are constituent characteristics of the material, physical, chemical, mineralogical, morphological characterization. We teach a lot. But using all of them, will they be able to apply to a given situation? If they can, and the type of questions you design in such a way, then it becomes pure and application knowledge. And then if you give them the behavior, concrete is subjected to compression, tension, shear, whatever uh, these things or different uh, places, if they can actually analyze that behavior and relate to the actual behavior of the structure, then it becomes analyzed, so PO2. So those course outcomes, one is action word and the knowledge. Action word and the learning statement, okay. Uh, but you should also target at PO2. In such case, and then concrete, if some courses can give you design, let us say. So you can also target a design concept, where whichever courses will do. Design a concrete mix. And um, so, so finally, you can give you a very open-ended assignment in every course. If you are giving assignment in that particular course, obviously you can also look at something prepared comprehensive report for group-wise, and you can actually measure the teamwork their communication. So, PO9 and PO10 will come. So, we are now started talking about PO1, 2, 3 in the first 2 to 3 um, uh, course outcomes, generally, one, one, 1 out of the first 5. And next 4 and 5 course outcome, you can start looking at either engineering and society or sustainability or teamwork or uh, project management or independent learning. This is how about 5 to 6 course outcomes becomes necessary for a particular course. If you do on most core courses, uh, about 20 of them in the entire, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, semester, if you can start doing it, generally when you do a course articulation matrix, okay, course and corresponding program outcome, all the columns with respect to program outcomes will be automatically filled and uh, you are covering most of the program outcomes and hence becomes, um, you know, uh, trying to meet the requirement of the Washington account uh, and also the program outcomes of the MBA. Now, this is something which teachers are requested to uh, look at. So, I have taken two examples to explain um, civil engineering, but I am sure there are many people with other one. So, one of my colleague who teaches uh, this uh, couple of courses in computer science, I requested uh, these are courtesy Professor Guru Prasad. Okay? So, we would like to bring in, if a teacher wants to write course outcome, what are the different ways he can do and how he can actually contribute or actually create a problem for the program art, uh, accreditation. Okay, Let us look at it in a simple way. The course is, let us say, analysis and design of algorithm, probably very common to all the um, uh, computer science program or information uh, science or technology. Can you hear me, am audible? Hello. Yes, sir, you are audible. Thank you. Okay. Let us say one of the course outcome some teacher would like to write. The student at the end of the end of this course will be able to state asymptotic notation. There is nothing wrong in writing such course outcomes. Okay. Um, um, but what are you targeting? You are actually asking students to only remember. So once they remember, they can state asymptotic notation. So is that what you want? Yes, if you want, you write. But um, the type of questions you are likely to ask is only the list the asymptotic notation, define asymptotic notation, write the asymptotic notation. Okay. So um, this a teacher can simply write like this and get away. But if you ask a question like this, but suppose this is PO1, and if he has mapped it to PO1, which is applied, 
then it does not map at all because these are only remember or understanding questions and does not map it to remember etc okay that's the idea moving further a teacher can also the same describe a cryptonotic notation now this is more of an understanding and the type of questions which can you generally ask in a test is describe explain difference again since because it is understanding level um if you want to map it to po1 if you map it this is not a good mapping correlation is not there and evaluators will be little worried about your understanding of the outcome based education and if you ask me a question sir can i not write this you can write it can i not ask questions like this is if you can not you want to know it okay but you cannot map it to po1 and use them for the calculation of the course attainment that is where the problem starts okay now really if you want to contribute in terms of application this is something like that you can look at it apply techniques um um uh, for time complexity analysis so apply has come the type of questions you are likely to ask these are only illustrative in nature probably you will be able to design much better um course outcome and then probably corresponding questions to that uh, so hence once you start doing this you are more more towards the you know correlation uh, of a regular course outcome so you will have a um, um action verb and you have a knowledge here and you are also parallelly thinking of which questions you are asking in your assessment on the back of mind you know this is application skills and this can be mapped to pivo 1 so this is how it goes for example so similarly you can extend it to analyze analyze the time complexity of different algorithms you can make it little more so this is the choice of the teacher as you can see so more and more um, you become a little more um, broader in terms of what you want to measure your students what is your expectations you are moving up the ladder in bloom's taxonomy you can start at apply or if your course offers you to kind of an analysis and related compute etc determine you can move towards that this becomes analyze similar questions you start thinking about them and you then make your students to talk uh, start looking at them more and more so if you can also design algorithms it is possible student at the end of the course will be able to design algorithms how by using appropriate design techniques if it is you have taught them and if your syllabus covers up to that so accordingly it is a design and then probably similar type of questions you can actually frame it so the, the point i am trying to make is course outcome design or course outcome expectation is not only the grammar action verb and learning statement it is about the assessment which you are going to ask in the next events which you have and to target which po which will actually eventually help your program for complete uh, coverage of the courses okay so hence it becomes very important a simple illustration was given so whether you can start with apply or analyze design or you can simply do remember and understanding so what type of uh, um uh, course outcome you write evaluators will know already now moving for the course outcome expectation or design is never only the statements as i told you it should always be related to your program outcome okay okay now there are called program outcomes as i said nba expects you to correlate them with 3 to 1 3 being substantial to be medium and 1 being uh, related for example so generally you should be looking at 3 and 2 the kind of evidences which you look at it so next about 15 20 minutes i'll be spending about this cop relation because this is where most teachers um, at least where i have gone and evaluated uh, um, you know becomes wanting in terms of explanation what they are doing so in order to do this for example um i'll just just take an one example let us say many people ask questions are how is this 3 to 1 or uh, you know um um you know done uh, because many people get confused etc so i would like to take an analogy uh, because probably some of you play cricket you understand these left hand people siko uh, these are the uh, people who uh, play cricket obviously okay so virat kohli the current indian captain everybody knows if if they know cricket basically so these are the program outcomes let us say or these are your course outcome if you can imagine 
So if this course outcome, this is PO1, PO2, PO3, PO4, PO5, PO6. So there should not be any confusion with respect to PO1, PO2, PO3 for teacher. Obviously, batsman is entirely different from wicket keeper or an umpire or a spectator. Okay. So it is like that. So that's why I said in the beginning, please um, make sure that you understand POs very clearly. Okay. Everybody understand Virat Kohli is a batsman and hence I would like to give three. Now, if somebody wants to give one, um, which is only rated, that becomes very unfair to Virat Kohli. But why do you say this? Because he is the highest run scorer probably now in the Indian team and he has scored tens of centuries, etc. So, batting is something which you can say um, that uh, he is uh, you know, substantially related. So, hence, in terms of our thing, if you can collect enough evidence, evidence for the course outcome you write, for PO1, let us say application, the type of questions you ask and uh, different events you design, if you have got enough of evidence, that is that related very strongly. If you don't have much of them, then it becomes you know, progressively less. So similarly, for Sachin Tendulkar, batsman 3, bowler only 1, fielder 3, but captain 3, but of course not many people may agree 3 here. So there could be some amount of agreement and disagreement, but there is part of outcomes education. If you take Ashwin, Ashwin obviously bowler is substantial, but batsman, yes, he is a decent batsman, but fielder, I don't know whether to uh, probably we have to give one by the type of uh, fielding standards which have been done. For Dhoni, yes, batsman 3, wicket keeper 3, captain 3, uh, hands down, people would like to give. So like that, different course outcome, by the character of your course outcome itself, you should be able to map it to appropriate POs. So this is the analogy which I have taken. So this becomes very important um, for people to do. So in fact, National Board for Accreditation in the self-assessment report, um, criteria three, ask you to write about six course outcomes of your choice uh, in the program, looking at one from third semester, one from fourth, fifth, sixth, so on and so forth. So what statement you write? So what all we discussed about so far, the statement which you write itself, when evaluators read it, will come to know whether you know how to um, write a good course outcome, whether to design a good course outcome. It is not sufficient in the below. They also would like to know how you have mapped them for which POs, program articulation matrix, your PO. So they go hand in hand. And if these things are well set, rest of the things will follow. Generally, your accreditation goes very smoothly. Uh, because uh, the practice itself is good. Since the practice is good, generally the outcome will be good in terms of accreditation. So, if you are practicing OBE in a proper systematic way, you need not have to worry about accreditation. Accreditation will automatically follow you. That's, that is the thing which is very important you would like to know. But unfortunately, when we go to different places, you look at um, people write this kind of a course outcome because MBA says 6, people will write about 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. And they write, understand, understand, apply, apply, apply. They keep repeating those skills. This is one of the SAR, which SAR doesn't matter, but this is what is presented to us, let us say. And then mapping for this particular course, they map it to everything. Somebody told you, to, you should not leave any uh, cell empty. So they three, two, one, etc. So this is not a kind of a Ludo or some kind of a game. Teachers have to be very specific. They have to decide what they want to measure from student. They have to measure, they have to be very sure which PO they would like to target through the course, relevance of the course, and start looking at the assessment methods which they do. So this becomes very important. I want to say, uh, the minute you present something like that, probably uh, the evaluators would know that you are learning outcomes, outcome-based education. Uh, I won't say wrong uh, because nothing is wrong because people are doing it, but if a teacher has to collect evidences for all the 12 or 11 you hear uh, one uh, while cutting it as God let us say, how much time a teacher requires to do this? It's probably humanly impossible to do it in three to four months and hence it is not acceptable. That's all. Nothing more than that. Okay. So very important, it's called constructive alignment in outcome-based education uh, terminology. How do we arrive at mapping based on constructive alignment? Important correlation depends on the relevance. Uh, what relevance you look at it. Strength of correlation depends on the constructive alignment of the assessment. What assessment you would like to see. That becomes very important. Okay. Um, 
So, um, in order to see that, let us look at some example. One of the example I take is very simple. I don't want to bore you with a lot of civil engineering example. Mixed proportioning, I have taken it because it's very similar to many of the optimization techniques. You want to use cement, aggregate, concrete, uh, sorry, uh, different materials, you have to mix them. Now, if I give the same ingredient to everybody, they are unlikely to make the same type of concrete. Like I give the same ingredient to make a samba or a dal for you, and five of them uh, I ask you to make, it is unlikely that it tastes the same. Uh, it is like that. So optimization becomes very important. So this is one of the things which most people do. If that is the case, and you can divide them into different groups, we queue them, but give us common target that they have to design an emphatic aggregate but different applications. So each of one of application is very very different for example so something like that you can introduce a complexity now if a teacher wants to in that such a situation is there such a uh, topic is there for you but that topic is very important for a student at the end of the course he should be able to use that uh, knowledge of having spent enough time but if a teacher chooses to write a course outcome like this at the end of the course will be able to understand this proportioning technique the teaching this proportioning techniques all right Okay, but they ask a simple question like explain the various methods of mixed proportioning. But they have mapped it to P O one, and when the evaluator come and try to map it, is it mapped properly? No, it's not mapped properly, and hence um, it cannot be taken as a proper correlation. If five marks are there to be allotted, uh, nobody will give you more than uh, one because zero we don't give because something has been done here. So hence um, you are you are wanting at that place. Some other teachers may be a little more uh, bold to write, apply the mixed proportioning techniques uh, in a field application and probably give uh, something realistic, uh, typical uh, design problem, something like that in one of the tests, for example. But all the information has been given here, so you have mapped it to P02. Yes, to some extent, um, they are trying to solve some problem, but it is unlikely that they are doing identifying, formulating, doing research, something like that and hence does not map completely uh, to some extent so out of five marks probably they will get let us say uh, two marks not more than that but a good teacher would like to contribute um, uh, in terms of this course uh, probably can uh, chip in with a course outcome like design the concrete mix and give an assignment for students uh, at different levels give minimal uh, input but maximum uh, hand holding to solve this problem in groups, etc., and then map it to PO2, which is problem solving, PO3, which is design, and then evaluators look at this kind of a course outcome, and then the corresponding so no alignment is there, and hence it becomes very, um, uh, etc. So, this is what actually evaluators will be looking in your course file. Generally, all teachers have to maintain a course file, and when you say three, what type of uh, assessment you have done? So, can I have a look at it? So, people may be asking you. So once you show a couple of these kind of things which your students have done for a period of time, in first year, second year, uh, probably you have to keep uh, good ones, not so good ones, and the medium ones for as an illustration. And you can explain why you are doing this, how you are doing this. So this is more realistic and probably four out of five or five out of five uh, or, or can be expected this for this kind of a statement, alignment and assessment. So that is what becomes very important. That's what has been told. So summary, in, in terms of CEOs, a teacher will have an option of writing any one of them. Please remember, okay, if you are in the first category, your uh, no PO can be mapped for understand kind of a thing because it falls under only remember and understanding. You cannot map it. And hence, you are not contributing through this course to the attainment of any course outcomes. And hence, program outcome, you are not contributing at all. The second one, yes, um, so you can get maybe one to three marks out of five, but still you will end up at only three years of accreditation probably, or no accreditation sometimes, if you are in this category, situation two. But if most of you are doing in the um, in this category, um, for most core courses and importing different skills, etc., so three out of four or four out of five, which is more than 70 to 80 percent of the marks, um, uh, and hence, you are taking them easily to three years accreditation and uh, with little more assistance from at the institute level, definitely six years of accreditation. So this is what is the make or break of a program 
in terms of course outcome each very one of us do hence this honor has to be taken by the teacher um try to you know target little more uh, design more and actually experiment more and teach more for the student so that is important and hence course outcomes become very important so that's what i wanted to bring it um one of the way which probably you can look at it is please look at um, for problem based learning to solve complex engineering problem is hence for for the second accreditation cycle uh, evaluators are likely to come and ask you what kind of complex engineering problem your students are solving so at least couple of courses core courses you can look at the problem based learning um, cooperative or collaborative learning is absolutely essential make uh, small groups and ask them to work it project based in some uh, programs you can do for example designing a car or designing an automobile designing a drone or very similar related kind of a thing uh, is becomes a project and teacher will give them a specific set of instruction and target and all groups will start working towards that now everybody may not be able to do but problem based learning is something everybody can do in their own course because students will set it up come to that there is something also called case studies very interesting um, and um, mba master of business administration people use this case studies very beautifully so engineering teacher should have a uh, good interaction with the, if you have got a mba program learn how they write these case studies and try to implement and you get enough evidence for that so problem based learning is basically group of students define problem and they define uh, actions and start working on a solution and teacher will only be on the back of it they will facilitate it will be skill based but with the content knowledge which you actually teach in your course the course syllabus will be same you are teaching the same 30 40 hours of your courses but you are challenging students to do slightly differently just to give an example i float a company uh, in the name of bms there is nothing like that but i float it and i tell the students that look you are expected to go through all this material sourcing of material quality control proportioning of mixers local level materials and these are the skills i need you if i you want to join this company so generally you give them a target um bring in employment every student will be very happy to participate and you tell that i expect at the end of the course some of these apart from your knowledge application of knowledge communication also some concern in terms of environment and you need to reflect what you have done so if i say and if they will start exploring and uh, some many course outcomes can be brought in additionally apart from pure and pure to um for example concrete i teach generally how to make a concrete impervious concrete in the sense no water should go for to put it on the rooftop but the problem which we give to a set of student is in urban area when water falls it has to percolate so that rain water harvesting can be done so what we teach in the class is totally different and what we ask them to do a solving or using the laboratory facilities on their own is pervious means means that to design for exactly opposite nature pervious how much water they can actually collect through a monometric setup uh, applying fundamental engineering principles they have to devise etc so student can participate in such events so these are actually activities and but actually you can um, map it to many of those islands so some other group is doing so most important assessment strategy uh, earlier uh, the experts were mentioning um what kind of things so rubrics you have to prepare a rubric what you are measuring directly when you do this kind of a problem based learning or any activity based learning self learning so uh, look at what you are measuring either you are measuring application or whether you are measuring analysis or whether you are measuring design or whether you are measuring uh, so this can be changed significantly and with proper rubrics you can actually measure to directly po1 po2 po3 you need to write c was also for this particular thing directly communication directly this thing you just write what is expected and give a marks and put it at the attainment level see what attainment level so this is how one has to do okay so and hence evaluators when they come they would not like to look at a crowded mapping instead of like instead they would like probably look at a sparse one may not be so sparse you can have few more pos if you are confident enough to map them and collect evidence for them absolutely no issues okay uh, but they have to be like this if you write you can write but if you map to any one of them it is not going to be appropriate so this is something which the evaluators will look at it and try to 
do this. So first couple of them, please use it for one to five, and next couple of them use it for beyond six uh, to map it. So each course should have at least one or two of P1, P2, um, or two of them, and another one or two or three of them at this level. So that is a kind of ideal situation for you. And these course curriculums can be prepared a little more general. Let us say prepare a comprehensive report. What is that action word? Is prepare. What comprehensive report? On a new knowledge. So you are not defining any particular knowledge for a student. Okay. But any new knowledge related to concrete technology or your own way of web designing or that sort of Since they are doing this in a group, it maps to PO9. Right? They are submitting a report. You are evaluating and hence PO10. Since they are doing in a new knowledge which you are not teaching on their own, they are doing and hence you are mapping into independent learning. This is how course outcomes uh, go. Okay. So. I have come to more or less to the end of my uh, lecture. So this is what I wanted to tell you: how you can do it and how you can map it, how you would like to bring it in terms of uh, um, you know evaluation. So probably at the end of this uh, session, um, I will be very happy if you can uh, define your course outcomes based on these guidelines. Whatever knowledge already you have, please don't leave that something which you have learned. Um, but Try to incorporate some of these things, which becomes easy for you to operate. Because what all I am sharing with you is something we have practiced. Let us say, map these outcomes with POs which you like. Maybe three to four is sufficient in every course because you have about 20 courses, easily very good courses. Um, they should be actually covering all the POs from PO one to twelve. In your course, please cover about uh, three to four POs or maybe five POs. It is a very good course. a uh, very important course okay so that is something and then most importantly start looking at the questions or assessment methods or the type of um uh, you know um uh, um uh, 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 things i showed it could be assignment or it could be an activity based uh, or problem based learning uh, something like that more and more becomes prominent in the course and at the program level also people when washington and all people came they were looking at the activities uh, which you design for the students um, be it a minor project at uh, second year level or a project at the end of this semester uh, 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 covering all courses or a capstone project or a research based product uh, project they are asking these questions let us say how curriculum wise you are embedded of course that will come separately Pro project will be evaluated and presented and that will be done in criteria 2 1 7 etc but within the good courses core courses particularly very important uh, which can give you analysis application and design see in all uh, programs i am aware that there are few courses which actually say uh, design uh, web designing course so designing becomes a very important uh, skill so talk about designing absolutely nonsense A little bit analysis we are doing only PO to PO three. Don't worry about application. Application will be done in physics, chemistry, maths, and many other courses. Something like that. For example, in civil we have a course called design of our CC structures. Now you should not be trying to do apply something etc. It is simply design. Collect as much evidences as possible. Try to ask students to do little complex activities. Map them. Collect strong evidence. Keep it in your course files and. Uh, a couple of uh, semesters it will become a good evidence for evaluators so that the skills have been imparted to students how much they have been imparted what improvements you are likely to make in this up she is uh, probably top you what course attainment uh, see what attainment and p what attainment uh, it has been already covered i was told okay so this is what uh, in the available time which has given to me i wanted to cover uh, course outcomes and expectations so anything there uh, i would like to interact um, Uh, if you have got any questions thank you very much for the opportunity yeah. so there is a question sure yeah so there is a question by document can you tell us like each people has contributed to the performance indicator so how we can communicate it see that is a document which acit has brought in which um, um has been given to you to further simplify what has been done in that particular document uh, with a couple of my good friends there is for example pivo 2 if you take an example and if you go there it simply says that identify research literature analyze 
Now in PO2, if a particular teacher is unable to contribute all the three in one course outcome, let us say. Now see, if PO2, if you take identified research literature, I analyze and do this projects easily do PO2 directly, you can map it. Okay. But if you have not been able to do in a particular course, for example, and hence performance indicators have come. So you can choose identify or analyze or apply in that particular. So write only for that performance indicator. For that, you write a corresponding course outcome and ask a question. So it is actually simplification of the uh, program outcomes which have been defined by the NBA. Um, if it is good, uh, if you are comfortable doing it, you please do it. Um, absolutely no issue. But somebody who can comprehend what he is teaching and he is sure in that course which PO, which part of the PO is straight away he is asking whether identifying literature, analyze. See, the way I design my uh, problem based learning, I do all of them in one activity and then send up it to PO2. I can show it to the evaluator, the identification of literature, research literature analysis of that and presentation of that. So if you cannot do it in such activities, if you are asking only questions, if you carefully see that ACT document for first test, second test, it is not for activities. Uh, if activities are there, you can do it, map it to direct. Okay. Any other questions? Hello. Yeah. Sorry, I can't hear you. Can somebody repeat that question? Hello, sir. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, I can't hear. Can somebody repeat that question? Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, for a subject, uh, yes. every teacher is engaged in uh, 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 not uh, trying to map the CO and uh, do a lot of evaluations. Instead, uh, if a faculty of, of IT individual course outcome. Is that allowed? Prashant, there is a lot of echo in your uh, question. I couldn't hear the second one. Uh, sir, uh, is that okay now? Yeah, yeah. Try to speak. Uh, I say that and we uh, come together and like we like people uh, will say no sorry i can't hear you sorry sir can you type or something short box somebody has asked if a theory course has a lab component then there will be a separate course outcome yes i have shown it in the standard material example uh, in the new ACT curriculum design, PO has competencies, competencies, performance indicator. I answered that question. Um, three to one strength of uh, PO, yes, three to one. That's what you have to do. Three to try to avoid one because that is hardly any related. It won't give any attainment. So, any question? Sorry, I can't. Um, Sorry, sir. Once again, you, shall I try? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have two account here. Uh, you ask me. Sorry, I can't hear you. Hello. Sir, is that yeah. audible now? Yeah, it is audible now. Please ask. Uh, sir, uh, actually the uh, the idea is that can a teacher, a group of teacher come together, uh, yes. decide, act, decide the activity and then yes. map, map that to the course outcomes and yes. uh, then uh, evaluate the uh, student injury uh, together. Uh, yes. To you are asking for a course. For example, uh, somebody is teaching um, uh, mechanics of materials, four, four teachers are teaching, 
they will come together decide uh, for activity yes answer is yes that's how it should be and and at the same time can uh, the sub, uh, subjects which are uh, interlinked can they, those teacher come together and decide the activity yes they can yes sir yes sir okay sir okay sir thank you sir. they thank can you. in fact in fact that is what is an ideal condition interdisciplinary um interaction but identify which attribute you are targeting that is, that is the idea okay if that can be coordinated it is fantastic but unfortunately as you are telling in most places if three teachers are teaching the same course for example okay they are not coming together that is the problem if they come together lot of things can happen yes sir thank you so much sir. yes sir really yes. is absolutely necessary this in a part we have to learn from the first year teachers physics department mechanic sorry mathematics department chemistry department they have been doing for years now they coordinate very well only um, engineering discipline we were teaching one one particular class for 60 now when they become 120 or 180 the problem starts okay sir thank you so much sir okay any other questions somebody wanted to ask some question uh, sir uh, Yeah, tell me. Tell me percentage. Yeah, this is uh, related to the previous question which you addressed about the competency and performance. Uh, sir, uh, each board has a different thing. Like we can only get the performance and competency. See, you don't uh, correlate with attainment. Attainment. Attain, see, correlation comes with three to one in terms of the mapping, CVPO mapping. Once you calculate the attainment, sixty percent of students should score more than sixty percent of marks, or seventy percent of students should score more than seventy percent of marks. So you calculate the attainment, let us say two point one. When you come back here, if your correlation is only one or two, correspondingly you should give weightage and then try to compute. all the competencies and performance indicators you split them in order to measure them have to be brought back to a common platform at the course level unless you do that it becomes very difficult at attainment level that's why that the act document uh, many people um, find it little difficult to compile though it's easy to operate in terms of giving questions and etc for understanding um, but for attainment you have to bring back to a common level so we don't we don't really look at that way we look at po1 po2 po3 properly first one is application second one is analysis third one is design we we design a proper co and conduct enough activities and assessment methods and show it as an evidence to the evaluator okay thank you any other questions Uh, no sir there are no question according to me okay thank you okay if there are no questions thank you very much for the opportunity thank you sir uh, uh sir on behalf of center for technology uh, i thank you for for the expectation session now we understood the structure of co i am sure all the participant are now able to write the course outcome for their subject as well as uh, we understood how to map the co to po and decide their level as uh, we understood the example of that cricket team and uh, so we are able to thank you sir thank you very much thank you very much for the opportunity thank you thank you prashant kap thank you shita We are obliged, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hope, hope it was useful. Okay. Thank yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Hello, Shubham Nand, madam, is there, madam? Hello. Uh, in the in the participant list, can we see Shaila Shubham Nand, madam? Yes, sir. 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 Yes